So this chapter is my favorite because I like do, doing these things. I've, I'm a statistician, so I've spent quite some years uh, on the theory about these things. So now I'm doing, uh, we are doing with using R. Okay. So we, this chapter, um, so when, when we make an inference, we do not just uh, on, on some data, we do not just make a, a simple statistic, uh, like uh, the mean and the, the variance, so the standard deviation and everything. So now we are doing inference on data. Uh, that means that we are um, uh, investigating what uh, is inside the data, what the data can, can tell us, and we cannot uh, retrieve immediately with simple, uh, you know, uh, like functions and everything, uh, or summaries, let's say. So we are making hypotheses. In particular, we, we're doing hypothesis testing. And uh, then we, uh, in this chapter, we select the best test to use with this type of data. And then uh, uh, we attempt to make an inference. So it's a sort of conclusion about what we found. Uh, if we are not happy about what we found, we, we need to like, do some resampling. So we do some bootstrap with tiny models. And then we use finally uh, an extra package which is not part of the core uh, packages in 3D models, but it's an extra, extra package which uses a function from the PASNIP uh, package. Okay, so this is um, going to be uh, smoothly uh, going through the chapter saying that the packages mentioned in the chapter are this uh, PSCL uh, to retrieve the data we are going to use. Then the infer package, which is part of the core tidy models packages for making inferences. Then there are two packages mentioned in the multi-level mode. We don't use it, but it's mentioned and suggested for you to, to look at if you, in case you want to, to do Bayesian, Bayesian uh, inference. Then uh, the, obviously we use Broom, Broom makes it and the result uh, to, Love to some. Yeah, some, some other summaries, uh, and as well as study by the bias and else art sample for another um, uh, type of resampling aside of bootstrapping. And then finally, this Poisson, Poisson regression, Poisson reg package, which is not part of the core of the study model packages. But uh, as this uses this function, allows you to use this Poisson reg function to use as in a PASNIP syntax, okay, with the engine and everything. Uh, so what's happened here? So obviously we load the study models, we set the preferences because it can be some conflicts, and then we load the data to use in this. Uh, uh, analysis. This biochemists, uh, these data basically are quite interesting because uh, are composed of uh, 915 observations, which are um, um, students or better graduates from PhDs. Uh, and they, uh, in this data, they mentioned about, they mentioned about the number of articles uh, Behim published it within the three years of the uh, PhD courses. And then there is a, um, a differences if they, about gender, if they're men or women, uh, marriage, or if they have kids, any kids. And this PhD uh, vector uh, is um, about the, um, uh, the, the, the rank of the institution of the PhD course. So they, it goes from zero to a maximum of five. So it's a, it's a rank for, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for the best course. 
uh, then uh, there is the mention. Okay, so we don't use all, all this information, but we, we focus on uh, the, the number of articles and the difference in gender. So the, um, the first uh, things, um, because looking at the world chapter, then the, the last model we will go through is the zero inflated model, uh, Poisson model. So I thought, why don't it maybe it's the case to look at the zeros? So how many uh, zeros, how many articles haven't been published instead of uh, the in just the numbers? Okay, and I found that a certain number of uh, quite important number uh, of um, of uh, observation uh, contains zero publication so some some graduates haven't published at all so either way if they are female uh, male or, or uh, female so this uh, uh, so as, as you can see you, uh, men we they have not published are uh, about 30 percent 27 percent uh, 28, let's say 28%, while men that have published are 72%. Women with no publications are 33%, so slightly more, and women that have published are uh, uh, 77, so slightly less. So here is the, the plot. I don't know if you want, maybe later, we can... Uh, see if we have some spare time about that okay so this is the uh the plot which has moved because these things this was happier okay that's fine um so as you can see there, there are not many many more zeros compared to the the, the, the total but there is a percent, percentage uh, of zeros so that would be interesting to look at uh, this um uh, influ uh how this this amount of zero will influence the uh, the model so in fact, uh, a second question would be, uh, what is the, def the difference between in number of publications between men and women? So as you can see, women have a higher zero number of publication and the lower the rest of uh, publications, like, except for like two, like it seems like more women have published, be able to publish just two articles, why men a little bit less, while all the other uh, counts are greater for men than for women. Damn. So, how are you getting not... your name on nine or 10 papers? Good Lord. Yeah. Reproductive. That... I had yeah. one in, <laughs> during my degree and like yeah. three or four afterwards. That's cool. Yeah. That, that's people that, that lots of publications so if, if you look at the, the curriculum they have 15 pages of publications and you know how do you do it but anyway so we are talking about counts okay so we have uh, integer numbers uh, so, and for this reason uh, and this counts are uh, happening not that frequently okay so these are two um, options, uh, how can I say correctly? These are two elements that we uh, the let think, uh, uh, us think about what would be the best distribution to use for representing this data. So as we are talking about counts and uh, they are not uh, happening that frequently within the time frame that we have specified of three years, we can use a Poisson distribution. Okay. So maybe, um, and then uh, we can start 
answering our question. Uh, that means, is, is there a difference in publication between men and women? So to answer this question, th this question uh, says that um, we, uh, we like to see the difference between the, the number of publications for women, the difference in number, uh, with, between women and men. Okay, so uh, our new hypothesis will be our H0. The, uh, we started making hypothesis testing using the, the new hypothesis, setting the new hypothesis as a, um, the, the, the average number of publication by men. It's equal to the average number of publication by women. We can even use the difference in means, for example, and set this to zero. But then let, let's focus on that, okay? And say, we want to see as a new hypothesis, if the mean of the number of publication for men and women is exactly the same. And this is our new hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is they're not the same. So, they, the difference in, they, they mean uh, in number of publication is different. So when we use this uh, um, sign, so as a, the alternative hypothesis, we are looking for the difference between two uh, publications, two, two values, two vectors. We, we, we are making a two-sided test, okay? Because uh, uh, here I, I haven't got the uh, the things that I, I wanted to to say, but uh, we are excluding the the one value, which will say that the mean of the the, the, the number of publication is equal to each other. So we are searching uh, as alternative hypothesis all all the things that are um, on both sides of the mean value. So we are doing a two-sided test. Maybe it's not, it's not that clear. I have so, a I have a question yeah. about the <laughs> symbology here. It's a it's probably not really that terribly important, but they're using lambda for the mean. Yeah. Does that Lam does that imply that's from count data or something like that? I mean. Yes, that that implies that that is uh, uh. the. The, the parameter uh, lambda is the average, as is the parameter of the of a Poisson uh, distribution. So we are using a Poisson distribution of with a parameter lambda. Lambda means in a Poisson distribution is the rate of publications. So but it, right. in this case, yeah. And it, and it's both the mean and the variance. So with a Poisson, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So one, one thing, this is kind of nitpicky, but yeah, they have like subscript M on the left, but then they have like they forgot the subscript on the right. So <laughs> it's a little, yeah, I just noticed oh, I that. I didn't see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe so, we send them a little note or something. Yeah, yeah you can you can uh, do it on GitHub. Yeah. Okay, so we are starting making a two sample test used to determine if two population means are equal. Uh, we attempted to prove the new hypothesis is false. So we want to prove that the new hypothesis is false. Uh, then we um, uh, basically, when we compute a p value, that quantify the probability of having obtained a comparable or more extreme value of the test statistic under the new hypothesis. So uh, finally, based on the p-value, we decide whether to reject or not. So to reject the new hypothesis. And this is uh, um, mentioned in chapter two of in, uh, ISLR, which is the uh, statistical learning, introduction to statistical learning book. So there is the second chapter which goes through all those things. So as we have defined the new hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, uh, we uh, can see, for example, here there's a little uh, summary that we have this number of men, this number of women, um, 
with a percentage of publication and, and the rate. Okay, so to analyze this data, we use a two sample comparison test. And as we have uh, said that uh, we are talking about counts that do not happen very frequently within a, a well-defined time frame, we can use a Poisson test. Okay, we can use a t-test, we can use a Poisson test. So in this case, we use a Poisson test for this reason, which uh, implements uh, hypothesis testing for difference in means. Okay, uh, I'm sure everyone knows about the Poisson test. And um, uh, as you can see, we have this, uh, we, we want to, to, to find the probability that X is equal to K, okay, some, some value, which is most probably the mean, which is the same for, for both uh, samples. And this is the formula for the, um, for the distribution. So uh, this, this observation will, spread along the, the axis following this, this uh, function. Uh, and it has just so one parameter, which is lambda. Lambda, it is equal for the mean and the variance. So let's go uh, forward about this. Um, when we make a model, OK, and we use a specified function for, for a distribution which is a Poisson distribution, we, we use a Poisson process, okay? And a Poisson process is um, uh, um, a process that uh, uh, for rare events that verify in a population. And there is some information in Wikipedia. And here there's a, an example. So like I can use uh, uh, Dipwa with a sequence, for example, and set a lambda, which is the rate of this happening, okay? The frequency of this, this happening. So if I change lambda to five, from five to 10, the, the distribution changes. So I need to find the best one for my data, okay? The best, and so the lambda as well. So about our data, when we want to, as we want to use this Poisson test, okay, this function is from the stats package. Uh, and uh, you have uh, this uh, alternative uh, option that you can use. Uh, you can do a test which is two-sided, less or greater. Okay, in this case, we do a two-sided because when we set the average, we want to look at excluded rejected the null hypothesis that they are not equal. We want to look at the two-sided, so at the difference. Then um, the T is the, the time frame. So in our case, it's three years. Now we have the, uh, the, the, the observation and the rate if we want to, to set them. Otherwise, we don't set them. In our case, you can see uh, how the Poisson test function is done on R, just typing Poisson test and all the function uh, it's available for you to see. Uh, so we, we do this Poisson test, uh, putting inside the number of women and the number of men, okay? Without any uh, grouping, okay? We have 900 women, what, no, no. And um, uh, sorry, publications from women, publication from men in three years' time. Okay, so this is the result of the um, of the Poisson test. So we ha we have a p value which is uh, zero. So when we make uh, um, this type of uh, hypothesis testing. Uh, we are now looking at the p-value because uh, uh, underneath the hood, it's uh, uh, in literature established uh, a threshold uh, 
uh, of uh, named alpha of 5%. So if your p-value is lower than 5%, which is the cutoff, the, the, the threshold, you reject, you allowed to reject the new hypothesis. Okay. Now, yeah, I, yeah. I had a quick, quick comment, if I may. Yeah. Um, I kind of got stuck here because they were using the number of publications, but to me, that's not accounting for the fact that there were a lot more men than women. So you would expect the number for the men to be higher, I would think. Uh, right? Okay. In, in this case, uh, that, that's why I said, uh, if you want to, uh, we, we can have a look at the function because the function, what, what the function, I don't know if you are more familiar with the t-test, for example. Okay. Right. Uh, let's uh, have a look. Uh, okay, more info. Uh, I'll put that here, for example. Okay. So, if we want to understand the Poisson test, for example, in the, there's some explanation. Okay, and I, I, I won't um, spend too much time on this, but basically. What it does is um, having a look at the at the data because you are um, just putting these two information. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. Okay, this man uh, and woman. Okay, they are obviously uh, one less than the other. So you say, right. you are saying. They but then are there's like, yeah, there's, you know? there's 494 men, so you would expect there to be more from the men than the women. I, th I think the answer is in that T parameter. I, th I think you can do something like, say, person years. So you would just like multiply the number of people by three. That, that's my, my thinking. I, I would have to probably confirm that with somebody. But yeah, that, I, like I say, I got stuck on it a little bit when I was reading last night because it just seemed like there was missing information there. Uh, yeah, it seems like yeah, m myself as well. Uh, that's why I've searched uh, around about these things. Uh, but it basically uh, do a <clears throat> calculation under the hood. Okay, uh, as you can see, if we do tidy without specifying the, the time frame, it releases the same result. Okay, in, in this case, it's saying that uh, um, the, uh, as the, the value, the p value result uh, equals to zero, because the, the Poisson deals with counts. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have uh, integer numbers that appears within a time frame. So he said, I have 900 counts. So one, three, seven, 15, 50. Okay, he does a, a sort of uh, resampling. He builds a, a sample of these values and then uh, uh, calculate, the, uh, apply a sort of model, okay? So like calculate the mean, the standard deviation, like a t-test, okay? And then, but it considers the rates of appearing this discounts in, in a sample, okay? In a sample. Oops. So it does resampling and then calculates the rates let, let's have a look at the at this at the function uh, in itself because I, I'll stuck on that as well mm -hmm. uh, for for the same exact reason. So uh, that is fine. I, I don't know if I can do that. Mm. Okay, I can do that. Okay, this releases the, the, the function. Okay, here you can see what, uh, what the function does. Okay, so leaving all these things, he makes a comparison, the methods, 
uh, the rate radio, as you can see, these are the integers from, uh, right. uh, yeah, the total. So that's so what like, I was thinking. You'd, you'd pass in the number of men and women to the T parameter because it's dividing by that. The function says you can pass T as a as a as a um, vector vector of length two yeah. as well. So you you could account for it perhaps. Yeah, I tried that and I still get a significant difference, but it's like it's yeah a, a lesser effect than a larger but still very small p value. So yeah, I think I think that's probably the answer. I would probably check. I might like I say I might just uh, send them a little quick note after we have our meeting to say, hey guys, <laughs> am I correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what is it? The things I wanted to. Um, that's why I've put these things. So yeah. you have a sequence of numbers. Okay. So, and they, uh, you have one, 20, and one. Uh, so, sorry, numbers that goes from one to 20, each one. Okay. So, it calculates the, the, the distribution of this uh, sequence with a rate of five. In this case, we have specified the rate. In the other case, it calculates the rate when you provide the two numbers. Yeah. Where, where is it uh, here? Where, where is it? But anyway, uh, let's go forward and we have more, we'll have more information about that because, uh, um, where is it? This is the first one and this is the second. Okay. So as you can see here, this is the function which is summarized by this uh, person who has post made the post. <laughs> Some code, more code here. More code. That's, really, that's pretty <laughs> funny. <Yeah. laughs> Skip like my part. comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do some stuff. Okay. So here is what's happening, basically. Some code because here cut all the things, but yeah. Uh, basically, it does the sum and the calculates the rates and replicates this uh, with different uh, things. But anyway, uh, I agree with you, uh, and I've just given an, an explanation to me about this, these things. So if we do, we do not specify t, the time frame, and we do tidy, we obtain the same result in this in this condition. Um, we have, uh, uh, we are not satisfied exactly from this result. We are absolutely not satisfied. So what we want to do is we want to do the resample or in, in, we want to try something else. Okay. So we are not satisfied with this function. We say we want to do, we need to, to do sampling and a, a permutation test. So we can use infer uh, package, uh, which is part of the core tally models. And they mentioned, if we go to, to the, the vignette of infer, you, you have lots of information, infer package. These are the, the, the function that, can, that you can use, and they are quite interesting. Uh, and, um, where is it? Let's go forward. So, and then there is modeldive.com, which is a book uh, and it's very, very interesting as well. So I put some, some information in the, in the chat. Okay. So we have this, uh, this function that we can use for making bootstrapping. And so inferences with the model. Uh, we do bootstrapping and then specify which type of um, uh, model we like to use. So we have this, this function. Uh, and basically this, the, 
the structure is that you specify, generate uh, bootstrapping, then calculate your statistics, and then visualize the result. So basically, with our data, biochemists, we specify, for example, the number of articles and the gender. Okay, when we use specify, we can use this tilde. If we use one uh, more, uh, so not only the response, but even the, the predictor. And then we want to specify that they are in a relationship. So we can use this tilde, or otherwise we can use like response equal to art and um, predictors even, uh, equal to uh, the other. But anyway, then we calculate this uh, statistics with uh, the option different in means, difference in means. If we go back to, uh, for example, we see what is this uh, calculate, okay. We go to calculate in, in fair package. You see that uh, you, you can use different things. They, they say what you can use. You can use different in medians, different in means, in proportion. You can use a key squared, correlation. So you, you have the option that you can, uh, uh, you can use. In this case, we use the difference in means. Okay, because that's what we are going to do in our in this case the hypothesis testing the new hypothesis will be zero and the uh, the alternative will be different of of zero so then uh, um you can even use the same procedure with generates uh, sorry uh, so now you have the the value of the defensive means and uh, you can use this value to generate um, to use within your uh, resampling when you resampling then you specify which one which is the value that is the the, the observed value the mean that you are searching because you you are searching for a value which is uh, very uh, you are doing resampling so you resampling your 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 observed data and then you calculate the mean of each resample okay and you want to find the the mean value which is closer to the real value and um, so to, to in this case, we generate uh, 2000 replication with this type of bootstrap, and then we calculate again the difference in means. So we have a list of uh, statistics that are all the means, the different in means, difference in means for the, the 2000 samples. Okay, we can get the confident intervals in this case, and then we can visualize what what are the, the result of our statistics. So obviously, so we have sample 2000 uh, mod, um, replications. We exclude all that is uh, outside the, this, this green area, okay? Now, what, what do we want? We need to add in this, in this visualization, where is our observed value? to see if it's inside or, or outside this, this, uh, this interval. And um, but before to do that, the, in the book they present with another, um, so you can do permutations as well as bootstrapping. And uh, with the infer, you can hypothesize with this function, hypothesize, set the, uh, uh, the independence within the variables. In fact, if you uh, have published two articles, it doesn't, it, it's not connected to the fact that you can publish more article or less article. Yeah, maybe the first article 
if you publish the first time, that would be more likely that you publish more that you haven't published. But then after a certain number, they, they are independent. So they're not connected to each other. So they did uh, uh, this permutation and then uh, um, set uh, uh, the, the, the observed value in the visualization. And as you can see, it's on a side, but within inside the range. Um, this is something that happened when uh, um, I think it's not uh, th there's, uh, th there's too many zeros basically in the sample. And the fact that you haven't published and the fact that you have published makes the difference basically. So let's go and see what else we can do to do this better. So we have two, two 15 minutes left, and we have two type of models that we use. One is a log linear model uh, using this Poisson regression, which is not part of the core, but allows you for a function which is the same as the Parsnip syntax Poisson regression. So we use the why the uh, question can be why we use the log linear models. Okay, we use the log linear models because we are counts. So we have discrete values, they are not continuous. So we fit uh, this uh, Poisson regression. Um, and the result is that uh, the woman publish on average uh, less than men for a value of, uh, what, what is this? Uh, is this, uh, uh, this is less 20, 22% less than men. And uh, this, yeah. Well, I think that goes back to trying to um, interpret uh, the coefficients of Poisson model. I'm not sure if it's exactly 22%, but I guess it's it's definitely le uh, less than zero. Okay. So, yeah. No, yeah, but this is decreasing, no? So you, you see that there mm -hmm. is a, a minus. Yeah, that, so, definitely. Yeah, there's yeah. a. It's that, so women, say, women publish less. Less. Married so, people yeah. publish a little bit more. You have a kid that really that hurts you, you as well. <laughs> yeah. On uh, average, this is on average decreasing the num the in percentage, um, yeah. the number of us. Okay. So this confirms what we thought. Uh, and we say, if we do tidy, tidy function, and we set a different confidence level instead of 95, for example, 90, uh, and we mutate the method as a parametric uh, and everything, uh, we obtain slightly different results. Okay, but still consistent to what we found. Then um, there is this function, um, which is uh, uh, the same as using uh, GLM function, but instead you can use all in, in, in the function, just as the same as caret. Okay, you have reg intervals, you set family Poisson, the type of model function and everything. And you still uh, have decreasing values, but the, the result is uh, a bit different. Oh, okay. Not very different, but still, okay, slightly different. So they make a comparison between these two and uh, a visualization. Okay, so I, I replicated the visualization. Uh, that's a goal <laughs> achievement. 
So with this position dodge two, finally you can put the, the error bars one on top of each other. So cool. yeah. yeah, so you can see that the parametric and the student, because the, this, the second one is the student, which is mm. the, the simple one. We can use Poisson or student for this type of data. So as you can see, the variation with the student is greater than with parametric. So you may want to spend, if you're interested, some time to see what are they. But where's, then, the, where's the plotting code? I'm trying to follow along with no, you. No, 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 there, not, there is not. There is they not. just show a plot. They don't show the code. In the yeah, book. You can, is that the plot there? Yeah, you can, you can have a picture. I don't know if I'm going to push this, uh, mm. uh, this data, uh, these notes, because I need to add it uh, at the bottom of the previous court. So I need to, I will take, it will take some time. Mm. And okay. So if you want, you can take a picture so you have. But anyway, uh, so we go back to the fact that uh, we are looking for the zeros. OK, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also we see that this PhD uh, rank is also influencing uh, the data or or not. So we want to see if they are influencing the, the rank of the 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 uh, the, this PhD variables is the rank, okay? And uh, we want to see if this is going to influence the data as well, the result as well. So with tidy models, what we do is fitting the, the, the model the first time as we know, then checking with ANOVA if there's a difference within the two. Yeah. Uh, and we see that the first, uh, the first is completely, uh, it's, it's null, okay, because it's redundant. So basically this PhD uh, vector is not needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we go forward with this uh, investigation and say, we look at the zeros and say, what, what if they haven't published at all, or if they have published? So we use this zero inflated model and you can find great, uh, great information about this in Julia's, mo uh, there it is. No, yes. Uh, in yes. Julia's uh, blog, here, there is a video which uh, she makes uh, an example with a Tidy Tuesday data set. Uh, this from the, oh, now I forgot. <laughs> Um, so this data for the releases in CRAN and um, bioconductors, the number of vignettes released. So uh, there is an, a certain number of zeros as, as the same as we are going through in this chapter. So I put this in the chat if you want to have a look at it, if, if you haven't done it already. So that will be clear uh, explaining um, the thing. Uh, so. Yeah. We use uh, with uh, tidy models uh, this zero inflated, okay, and we set uh, this inside the engine. Okay, we use Poisson regression as before, but now we add, uh, so we specify the engine. Okay, we specify the engine with zero, infl zero inflated, inflated, okay, so then we fit this model, and uh, the fit of this model. It's a bit of particular because you need to add this bar, this pipe. So basically the model contains two models and says uh, fit the first model, this one here, or and or this, this second model, okay, without the response. So it's a supervised and unsupervised. So zero, look at the matrix of zero and non-zero about the data that I have provided and look at the same data connected to a response variable. 
Okay, so we this type of uh, model releases two model results, one which is zero inflated and one which is not, <laughs> basically. And as you can see, there is a difference. Okay, one is negative and one is not. So this is the, you know, you say, why is that? So if you haven't published, it's more likely that you are a man or woman. Okay. Un unpublished? Unpublished, a zero woman. publication. Yeah, yeah, a woman. Okay, but if you have published, who is more likely to have published less within the two gender? Still a woman. Okay. So we use the ANOVA again to check these two. Except it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. So what they do is to uh, bootstrapping. Uh, you read the book, so you can use that, map. That takes a nice other. long time to run. I ran that yeah. last night. Still running. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's still I running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hit it like five minutes ago. It's still going. <laughs> oh, yeah, though. It yeah. took a while. I save it. I save it and uh, read You're it good. back. So you can do that and uh, do these things. And uh, these are the results. Okay, now I got lost. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I yep. like how this shows how you can pull some of that information out because, yeah, that's what I struggle with sometimes with tidy models is they have all these various uh, objects. What does that yeah, mean? It's nice, it's nice to see where they say, oh, here's how you, you know, can, can interact with it. So that's good. What exactly? The, the, um, the oh, just, just, uh, just in general. So like extract fit engine. So it's just like, yeah, oh, that's how you get your, you know. All right. Yeah, your model right. out and then you, you pass that to the AIC. So yeah, just stuff like that is nice. Yeah. To, to so now you can use, uh, uh, so as uh, we use the AIC to, uh, because of the number of predictors. So we are dealing with the number of predictors. So we want to see what is the uh, adjusted value in case we use some predictors, in case we don't use adjusted. So it, it's always, we are always talking about uh, uh, the, 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 the sum of the error, okay? So the, the margin of error. So here the IC, it's an adjustment of, of, the, uh, of the error rate, okay? So, uh, in terms of taking care of the number of predictors, um, correct me if I'm saying. <coughs> okay. Sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. So we do the two models with the I, uh, AIC, see the result, uh, and finally establishing what is it that we have a mean of one. Okay. So, yeah, so basically the zip is always better. So, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> so the uh, <coughs> zero coefficient model saying that the estimate. It's not quite as strong for women mm -hmm. versus men there. It used to be point two, minus point 0.2, right? Yeah. But married, I think, went up a little bit. Hmm. PhD hmm. went down a lot. Mm, PhD should be. And what was what was meant again? Is that like you have a mentor or what was that? Yeah, um, I can't remember. No, no, PhD. PhD should be excluded uh, because that that there is I a. Thought we of... took it out. Oh no, it's there. In no, no, half. it's there. It's there. It's, it's here, and is the one that has the the most, uh, you know, normal trend yeah. when releases the result. Okay. But uh, um, it's not influencing the the publications, or it does a lot.
okay so um, so now there is a, a circular collision of um, percentiles and uh, t confi confident intervals with the student and um, let's go back here and say that uh, we have seen this uh, without, without PhD rank, okay? So when we do the zip model, we do two models. One supervised with a, a response without PhD and one unsupervised or better, which is not unsupervised, but it's just a, an exchange of uh, predictors. It's just with and without PhD, isn't it? Yeah. Because the pipe means or in this yeah. case, or is it a special, is it mean something else in the formula format? I know you, you, you can use it for error terms when you're doing like one or something in I think we, linear yeah. models. I think because of the kind of the model, the way I was interpreting it is the second one was to predict whether or not you have anything. So that's like the zero predictor. And then the other one was if you do, how many do you have? It's like a two part thing. Okay. Uh, that, that's, uh, that, um, I say why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, because if you go to the blog and say that she did the same thing, with different mm -hmm. data, uh, but then when uh, she, what is it? When she tried the zip, I don't find it. Uh, when she tried the zip, uh, she made um, mm -hmm. This is all very quite, it's quite specific to this type of model though, isn't it? Yes. Like what is the, the in general, the applicability of this same process flow to a different one, different type of model is more or less the same or you I wouldn't would think use these similar. same steps? Because I feel like in, in many ways, just kind of stepping back after having gone through most of this chapter. Okay, like, there it is. It feels like it's, um, didn't didn't we already do some of these like we did i guess we didn't do hypothesis testing we did like no model fit quality but isn't that mm -hmm. aren't they kind of related like if you just had a linear model with a bunch of i mean we did that right we did like a, mm -hmm. a, a linear regression versus some other kind of regression versus um uh, like a random forest and all that previously mm -hmm. Maybe this is maybe this is the discussion we need to have next week. <laughs> maybe, yeah, we could go yeah, like, I, what are the loose ends? <laughs> Everybody, yeah. bring your uh, bring your topic. Yeah. So basically, here she used a, a very simple model with just uh, a predict one predictor, and she did this too, as you see, the response and the um, the predictor, and the other model as just the predictor. So, okay, so this is the type zero infinity. This is the output of the workflow. Okay, so there it is. Because in, in this case, she said, if you want to use a workflow, okay, and you have set the Poisson regression, set engine zero inflated and everything, and you want to use the workflow, then you need to specify the variable. So which one is the outcome and which one are the predictors? And then add the model. But as you, as you can see, this model uh, with the pipe uh, within, within it, uh, 
as the same predictors, okay? So that's why I, I thought that was uh, like a model which was making supervised and unsupervised analysis and cool. say, well, anyway. No, no, so, it's good. Thank you for, for explaining. I, I can't say I completely still get, I, I completely get it, but, <laughs> but I, I hope to one day soon. The conclusion uh, is a bit, uh, it's a conclusion uh, because um, he says that uh, um, more can be done, of course, uh, and said one of the covariates meant, uh, which is this, uh, appear to be important as a, um, that appear to be important as a very skewed distribution. So the result is on a side, and it's a side of the. Uh, so that I will expand a bit more about that. Here, but uh, it's it's very interesting. It, there's lots of potentiality. Uh, you can use this smooth level model. Um, I, I I haven't seen maybe. We can, I don't know, have a look at that. And there's lots of interesting resources, uh, even books. Uh, this is very interesting book. Oh, that is, yeah, I should probably have a look at yeah. that. And that's it. All right, what book club should we, we join it. next? <laughs> now that we we I, I just started ISLR. Uh, ISLR is good, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot more detail, I think, than, mm. but I guess in a good way, because I've had all these yeah. questions about why you choose certain models and stuff like that, and they're, they're really digging in, <laughs> um, for me anyway. I, th I know some, some of the folks in that club are just like, yeah, and then this and this, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's interesting. Cool. <laughs> So I'll all ask right. all the stupid questions there as well. well right, okay. Everybody. So what do we do? We so want we'll, to meet? Yeah. Maybe one more time and. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Do you do you want to do you want to do a specific thing or or? Absolutely. Like anything we should do or yeah. Okay. Yeah. What what should we do? Inference. Oh, uh, just just the data, some data. We can we can get, even choose the data, mm -hmm. and then make a model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have some data. Sorry. I mean, uh, uh, I was just thinking we could just go back to the original data set in the book with the uh, the Iowa housing stuff and go ah, back yeah, to that. Okay. Maybe, maybe that. Yeah, yeah. run some models on it and go through the whole process and pick some stuff and then come back and talk about some of the later, some like some of the later things, how we evaluate cross models and things like that, that weren't applied to that data set early on. Um, might I, I might try and do that. that. That might be what I try cool. to do. Okay. If my computer will keep up. <laughs> Need to get one of those Mac studios or whatever. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you two you two share the 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 hour. Okay, can you do in half an hour? Both. I think so. You try, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then Good. hopefully maybe Laura, <laughs> Ryan and others yeah. can make it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we advise on Black that we make two yeah. Half an hour month. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I'll, if you if you make a blurb on Slack and uh, mm -hmm. I'll put underneath what I'm going to try and do, maybe. And uh, okay. And then, you know, Stephen, if you have a tweak to that or want to do something slightly different or use a different data set, that, that'd be great. Okay. I think we could go with okay. the aims. And then, yeah. I'll, yeah, we'll just go with that. Okay. Cool. Okay. Agreed. It's a model off. Model <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> All right, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, have a good weekend. Yeah, have too. a good weekend. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.